Welcome to the Eye of the Storm at the Museum of Discovery and Science in Fort Lauderdale. Sponsored by the Florida Division of Emergency Management. I'm meteorologist Eric Solna with the International Hurricane Research Center at Florida International University. And in this video, we're going to hear from the National Hurricane Center. They provide the cone of uncertainty. They let us know where storm surge is going to be. They have a huge role and responsibility for the entire hurricane season. This is Ken Graham. I'm the director of the National Hurricane Center. At the National Hurricane Center, we're responsible for issuing those forecasts, those watches and warnings for tropical systems all the way across the Atlantic, all the way into the Pacific. In fact, our area of responsibility stretches from the African coast, the European coast, all the way to 140 degrees west. That's near Hawaii. So we're always watching for hurricanes, tropical storms, and also marine forecasting. We also issue forecasts for that area for seas, winds, and really trying to keep all the ships out there safe. So it's a large area of responsibility, and we're here 24 hours a day to, to keep people safe. You know, hurricane forecasting is incredibly challenging, and we've worked so hard over the, the years with the science and improvements with the modeling. So we've made large progress with the, the hurricane forecast, especially when it comes to the actual track forecast. Intensity is still difficult. And if you think about how difficult uh, the forecast is, you could be looking at uh, a, a low pressure system that's in a, a world apart all the way across the country that's eventually going to make its way closer to the hurricane that steers it. So you're not just looking at the hurricane, you're looking at steering currents a hundred miles away, a thousand miles away, all these different steering currents in the upper atmosphere. That's what steers these hurricanes. And then the oceans have so much influence on intensity and, and the strength of these hurricanes. You know, it's not just the intensity, it's not not just the, the actual forecast track, but for us, it's also the size. We have to forecast the size of the hurricane and the forward speed. The larger the hurricane and the slower the hurricane, the more storm surge you can get and also the more rainfall. Yeah, storm surge forecasting is, is a big challenge because there's so much that goes into that storm surge forecast. You look at elevation of the land, but not only that, you look at the land underneath the water, which is called bathymetry underneath. What's the shape of the slope underneath? That has a lot to do with uh, the storm surge forecast. But the other part of it is, is the size of the storm and also the forward speeds. The larger the storm, the more storm surge you can get. This is the leading cause of fatalities in a tropical system. The second leading cause of fatalities is inland flooding. 90% of the fatalities in these tropical systems is actually the water. You can also get tornadoes and of course you get the wind. One of the most popular products that people use from the National Hurricane Center is the cone, the cone of uncertainty. And it's basically based on our error, our average error over the last five years. So the better we do, the smaller the cone. And if we have a few off years, the cone can actually get larger. So everybody has to realize that's a cone of error, not necessarily anything to do with the impacts. Two thirds of the time, we expect the center of that storm to be inside that cone. That means one third of the time it could be outside that cone. And that's why we tell everybody, just be real careful when you're using uh, the cone of uncertainty. Because remember this, outside of that cone, you have the winds, you can have storm surge, you can have plenty of, of rainfall and actually the, the rain bands with all the tornadoes. So it, that is just, the cone is only about where that center could be hundreds of miles, if not several hundred miles away, you can still have the big impact from a hurricane. Here at the National Hurricane Center, we issue watches and warnings for storm surge, for hurricanes and tropical storms. And we use a criteria that's really based on this. When we expect 48 hours in advance that you can see tropical storm force winds, we will issue a watch and then we'll put up a warning for these conditions when we expect tropical storm force winds within 36 hours. The reason we do that is because once you get tropical storm force winds, it becomes too dangerous to be working on your house, holding a piece of plywood, anything outside becomes too dangerous. And that's why we put up the watches 48 hours out and the warnings 36 hours out before the arrival of tropical storm force winds. Thank you so much to Ken Graham, director of the National Hurricane Center for being a part of this incredible Eye of the Storm series. 
You know, here at the museum, we are dedicated to connecting people to inspiring science and truly creating the next generation of scientists. And we do that in all kinds of amazing ways. Hey, I'm Brady. I'm Lan. And we're here at the Museum of Discovery and Science, and we're going to be making our nitro cloud today. So usually when you see clouds in the sky, that's a lot of moisture that's been evaporated from the water cycle and is collecting in our atmosphere and collects enough until it condenses and packs into these tightly formed clouds. And when other forces like temperature or pressure makes that release, that's where rain comes from. For us today, we're gonna to be making a cloud using some pretty powerful chemicals in one of our classic experiments here. Now, Lan, what do we have in front of us here today? We have two different liquids here. We have our liquid nitrogen, which is negative 320 degrees. It's so cold that it feels like it's burning you. And we have some hot water here. It's really, really hot. I want to say how, how hot? I'd say probably like maybe a little over 100 degrees, 100 120 degrees. degrees or so. All right, and I'm going to add these two in together. First, I'm going to add my liquid nitrogen for about 10 seconds. Then I'm going to add my hot water. And from there, what do you think is going to happen, Brady? Uh, well, let's see. So he's going to pour in the liquid nitrogen now which is the most abundant gas in our atmosphere, right? It takes up about 70, 75% of our atmosphere. It's pretty inert, it doesn't really react to much. We don't smell it, we don't really feel it. But when it gets cold enough, about 320 degrees below zero, it turns into liquid. Those molecules condense and pack in tight enough uh, to become a liquid from a gas. So the water, which is about 400 degrees hotter than the liquid nitrogen, is gonna cause a really intense reaction when we mix the two together. Are you ready to go, Yes, Lance? give me All a right. countdown. So we're gonna go from five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Every time. So we just formed a pretty intense cloud here and it's kind of dispersing away. And again, this is just moisture from the water hitting with the very intense temperature of the liquid nitrogen and that disparity between hot and cold uh, and the moisture involved gives us this cloud, much like the clouds we see on our atmosphere, uh, especially when a storm is about to pile up. Since seven years old, I wanted to be a meteorologist. In fact, I was even told by my mom that I took observations on a calendar every single day um, of the weather, what the temperature was. I've been fascinated with weather since I was a little kid. Being a meteorologist in the National Weather Service for the last 25 years and the last couple of years here at the National Hurricane Center, it's, re it's a rewarding profession. It's, it's where you, you're challenged with the science, but then you can turn that into information that people can use to be able to save a life. Just knowing that our mission, to, to serve that mission to protect lives and protect property, it is incredibly rewarding. Yeah, for all the students watching today, I highly encourage you to get into environmental sciences, you know, atmospheric science, meteorology, but also oceanography, also climatology. There's so much more to learn when it comes to the environment. And, and the field of meteorology is incredibly rewarding because you can take this science, turn that into information that people can use to make decisions to, to protect them, to save their lives. And there, there, it's so rewarding in, in this profession. So I highly encourage you, don't be afraid of the math and the physics. The, the rewards outweighs the challenges of the science. It's always critical to be prepared for a hurricane. We always hear the, the terms have a plan, but even before that, it's critical to know your risk. If you're in one of those zones that get the storm surge, remember storm surge, we've said it, is the leading cause of fatalities. Know your zone, know if you're in an area that needs to evacuate, listen to those local officials. That's the most important advice I, I can think of, is listen to them. Understanding that risk is step one. And the next step is to write a plan. Have a real plan for you and your family to be able to, to be safe in a hurricane. Know your risk, plan for those risks, and minimize those risks, and know where to go. Have the supplies, start early, and avoid the rush. Thank you for joining us for another Eye of the Storm here at the Museum of Discovery and Science. Today we learn all about hurricane science and we learn from the National Hurricane Center, a great partner. Don't forget that all of these Eye of the Storm segments are made possible thanks to Florida International University's International Hurricane Research Center and the Florida Division of Emergency Management. 
why don't you follow along all season long with the Museum of Discovery and Science so that you're prepared for hurricane season. We'll see you next time for another edition of Eye of the Storm.